we got the electric motor of the world's first soon electric Gilmore Girls Jeep mounted. Woohoo! Can you see it? It's right underneath here. And now that I look at it, I'm like, of course it goes right there. But I tell you, this was quite a journey, so let's start at the beginning. Welcome back everybody to another episode of our Jeep conversion project. This one is especially exciting because we finally got the electric motor and the inverter all mounted. When you wanna start out with an EV conversion, you will realize that there is quite a lot of options on how to do that. And if you followed this project from the beginning, you know that we kind of set our requirements. We wanna take it off-roading. We wanna go at least 100 miles on one charge. We have a maximum speed of around 80 to 100 miles per hour. And we want to just keep most of the functions that the original Jeep used to have. Every time you form such a requirement or expectation of your EV conversion, you will affect how your electric powertrain looks like, the power that you need for your electric motor, the location where you want to put it. Do you want to have two wheel or four wheel drive? And you will define how much space you need for batteries. We have done quite some modeling and CAD, so computational aided design work in the past, but now it was really time to do some real hands-on work. Look like the most stable, but... <laughs> So there was lots of measuring, discussing up and down and back and forth, trying to figure out the right location for what we call the concept one. We actually ended up doing something different, but let me first explain to you what we mean with option one. One of the first real concepts where we thought, okay, this is the way to go, is putting this electric motor a little bit more to the front and then distributing the entire pack into a front pack into two modules underneath the car and one at the very back of the Jeep with its simulations and analysis. Also, we thought, you know, the vehicle weight would be very evenly distributed with the battery modules kind of laid out like that. That was our first concept. Well, then we started making our batteries. So for those of you that don't know, we're not buying ready to use batteries, but we're somewhat making our own out of scrap Mustang Mach-E batteries. So we disassemble them all and kind of build up our own battery modules. And of course, then battery boxes and integration is also done by us. Now, after we did the first battery module, we realized certain restrictions by the BMS. And then also it's quite some effort to have individual liquid cooling and heating system for each battery module individually. And another thing that we didn't like about the batteries right here, those battery modules would get very, very close to our frame and to our drive shafts and we just didn't think that this is a viable option. So then we changed our concept to exactly what you can see here. As you can see, to make Concept 2 work, we had to make some significant changes to our chassis here. We will now cut a hole. Cut a hole into my Gilmore Girls Jeep. So Darren did a really good job making this big hole here, which I find really cool because this Jeep in the end will also be a demonstrator to show people how technology works. And it will be really cool when you sit in here. And of course, we will have a plastic transparent plastic cover or something here, but you can really see all the electric components in this Jeep. So it's not like a black box. The way we position the electric motor is that we put the transfer case at the stock location. And from there on, everything else aligns to it. You can see here the inverter, and this is where the cables of the battery will go in. This inverter here will convert the DC power coming from the high voltage battery pack into the AC power that is needed for this AC motor. So actually it's pretty cool to see that. We selected an AC motor by Cascadia Motion with 225 kilowatts. And to really use the whole operating range of this electric motor in a very efficient way, we decided to get a 3 to 1 speed reducer. In order to attach this speed reducer to the stock transfer case, we needed to make our own custom adapters. And as you can see here, we had quite a few versions. These are actually just a 3D printed. And even the one that we have right now in the Jeep to do those fittings is a 3D 
3D printed with a home 3D printer. Of course, in the end, we will get this adapter plate made of aluminum. But it's pretty amazing to me how strong that actually is. This is some of the first layers, one of those, and you can see that it's not even completely filled. You can see this grid that is kind of printed. It's just really amazing when you want to try things and try where, where things go, and maybe you want to make it a little bit wider or change the size of the holes like we did. So it's a really convenient thing to do. Another thing we needed to do is make the mounts for the electric motor. Can you see how shiny they are? That was me! Now let me show you what you can actually see here. So this piece here is the electric motor, right? We have two motor mounts on the left and on the right that are bolted to the tabs which are welded to the frame. On top of that motor is the inverter and now here this is the 3 to 1 speed reducer. The motor, inverter and speed reducer come as a complete package by Cascadia Motion. Then what you have to do to kind of couple this with the original, with the stock transfer case, is you have to make an adapter. Of course, inside of that adapter, there will be a small custom shaft that connects the output of the speed reducer to the input of the transfer case. And then Darren, who is our amazing fabricator, made this piece here that holds the adapter plate in place and again is connected to the stock frame. So this is the entire system. And now, as you can see, the really nice thing is that we can use the stock drive shafts. Yippee! Do it this way. Okay, that's kind of fun. So this is where the gas tank used to be, right? So this is our future rear battery box. Then this is obviously the rear axle and the differential. This is the stock drive shaft, the rear drive shaft that goes into the stock transfer case. This blue thing that you can see is our custom-made adapter plate. This goes into our 3 to 1 speed reducer and then into our electric motor. And this is the area where the engine used to be. This is where our front battery box will be very, very soon. This is our entire electric powertrain. I like this view. Let me show you real quick how that compares to a gas-powered Jeep because we got one right here. So we start at the rear here with a gas tank. Then this is obviously the rear axle and the differential. This is where the rear drive shaft would be. This yellow piece here is the transfer case. This is the skid plate. By the way, we'll have skid plates like that also in our Jeep. And then of course the transmission as well as the engine all the way to the front. This is where our battery box will be. We also have a really cool idea for our spare tires. So we started already to scan one of those tires because we maybe want to make a little pocket here for a charging cable. Maybe we got a couple more electric motors right here for future Jeep conversions. These are two electric motors, inverters and onboard chargers from Crash Nissan Leaves. One of them is 110 kilowatts and I think the other one, the bigger one, is 160 kilowatts. Our motor, as a comparison, has 225 kilowatts, so it's the most powerful one. The last thing I want to show you in that video is cat work in real life. C-A-D. Cardboard aided design. <laughs> This is the size of our front battery box. I thought I built this box so I can see if it fits. This is right where it goes. It will fit quite well. We'll need those areas here for the 12 volt battery, for the electric pumps. Underneath here we'll have the onboard charger and all that stuff. But this is where the battery will go. Let's see if this can still close here. Done. What we're doing right now and what I want to show in future videos is we're building this battery box for real. Darren is helping us to fabricate like the underneath construction so we can mount this battery box right here and the same goes for the rear battery boxes. Of course then in the last video you have probably seen that I worked on the VCU, so the vehicle control unit and how all these parts will communicate with each other in the future. So one of the next things that we're doing as soon as we have the high voltage battery pack ready 
is bring it all here, put it on a table, connect it to the electric motor and of course to AEM, so which is the VCU system that we chose, and then really try and start the electric motor for the very first time and hopefully spin the wheels. Stay tuned for that.